everyone. Danny here today with my youngest son, Justin. Let's see. Just a little bit here. We're going to do something a little bit different for today's video. Instead of reviewing one book like I normally do it and as we've done in the past, we're going to talk about the book series that we're most excited about. The, the series that we just, just cannot wait for the next book. Some of these just released a book. We just finished a book. Some of them we know the next book is getting ready to come out, but then we got to wait for it to reach Audible. So these are our top six. Is that what we got? Our top six authors and series that, that we just, just can't wait for. Before I get to that, though, I have a favor to ask, as per usual, if, like me, you love audiobooks, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications button, join me and my son, my nephew, my family on our wonderful audiobook journey. Now, to the series, you want to start off? What, 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 what would you say out of the list we kind of put together there is your... My favorite? Yeah. Um, that's actually really hard because a lot of them are, they're, a lot of them are different in subtle ways, but it changes the story a lot. So, Kel Cade has probably been my favorite for the longest amount of time, um, but the newest one would be, um, who is it? It's the, Got the Completionist right series, the Dakota Krauts Completionist yeah. series. Goes uh, Ritualist and then Regicide. I'm waiting for the third. I finished both. You're still in the middle of Regicide. Right. I love that series. It's a different, totally different take on it um, from like Alaron Kong's, mm -hmm. where he, Alaron Kong's um, in the land, he gets kind of tricked into agreeing to go with it. And in this one, the main character of Dakota Kraut series, he's in a bad place. He got injured in the military, and essentially he gets put into the game forever, and his body's actually destroyed. Um, Totally different take on it, but I love both books. Well, and just so you know, when we get together on Christmas, it will have given me the chance to finish the series. There's two books out in that series. I, I'm with Justin. That is just... It's going to be hard-pressed on whether that becomes my new favorite series. That's how good it is. We're going to do a video just about that series when we get together for <clears throat> Christmas. So we're not going to talk too much about it now because we're going to save that for the next video. But it is... There's two books out in this series, and it is an amazing, amazing series. It's not a lit RPG. It's based on lit RPG. And really, lit RPG is something new to me. It was introduced to me originally by Drew Hayes and his Sword Spells and Swords, Spells, and Sorcery series, which is one of the ones that is on the list right here. I didn't understand at the time that it was lit RPG. It wasn't until someone said, hey, check out Aileron Kong and his land series. That's not the name of the series, but I call it the land series, that I discovered what lit RPG was. And now, even though I've never played RPG, it's, it's one of my favorite <clears throat> genres out there. I mean, this list, we've got six books on this list, and I can tell you right now, one, two, three. All but two of them. Yeah, all but two of them either are lit RPG or are based on lit RPG. Two of them on there. One is Drew Hayes, Sword, Spells, and Self, and the next book's about to come out. It comes out today or on the 18th. I can't remember, but I looked it up because I, I re-listened to the series about a week ago. Now with my job, instead of him being the one listening to all the books, I'm the one blowing through books. So I just re-listened to the entire Spell, Swords, and Sorceries uh, that's out right now, and I looked it up because I was like, there's got to be another one. It comes out either today on the 16th or in two days on the 18th, and I can't remember, but we don't know when it's going to hit Audible either way. He doesn't have that set up. Just yet. Yeah, that, that's the print version that, that gets released, and then, of course, it's got to be produced for Audible. And I have been, that's one of those that, you know, I have my list that I'm regularly going into the pre-releases, and it, please tell me this is on pre-releases. Yeah. Hasn't been on pre-releases. You know, and then Aileron Kong, of course. Everyone knows who Aileron Kong is. Love his series. You can look back and see I've done reviews on all the way up. I'm on his eighth book right now. You finished his eighth book, right? I finished that series yeah. in a week. All see, I'm, I'm no longer 
sitting in a truck driving all day long, spending 11 to 14 hours listening. With the job that I have now, I only get to listen to a couple hours a day. And his eighth book is 47 hours long. <laughs> and I, I'm not able to listen to it enough that I could finish it and post my regular video on Friday. Boy, my steam is like blowing in front of the camera. I don't know if you can see that on your end. Yeah, I but, can. Um, so I'm kind of spacing it out so I can make sure that I have a video to release every Friday. If it wasn't for that, I'd be blowing through that book. It would take me two to three weeks with it being that long. But that that's another book series. I mean, it, even if you don't... Like, you've played RPG, right? You play yeah, RPG. Yeah, I, I play Dungeons & Dragons with... Um, I played it with two groups. I generally just play it with my one friend group, but we have a couple different campaigns going. So it's kind of interesting to go from playing the game and building your character and doing the role-playing yourself to watching it go through into a book and like in Dakota Krauts I really like how <clears throat> there's one character which I know is I think your favorite character the chiropractor I love that guy love that guy he, he builds his character where his charisma is really low that dude took the book from like good to stratospheric awesome in my opinion he, he, he took and made his charisma really low and I was wondering how they do it because it's a virtual reality game and so how would you stop the characters from you know just dropping one thing really low and then ignoring that when they play the game. Well, it actually makes it so that he hears things differently and he reacts to things differently. So he's trying to adjust everybody and he thinks they're all asking him to be adjust. In reality, none of them want to do anything with them and he's just running around punching people in the back, popping their back and readjusting them. And he almost gets killed by the guards because of it, but he's adjusting the guards as he's fighting them. It just makes for a really interesting. It's just hilarious. Character. I'm laughing my butt off so often with that guy there, you know. And it is with the with the lit RPG. You have like the Drew Hayes series, which was my first introduction, where where they don't talk about really leveling up. They don't go into the statistics and stuff like that. And here's something that I found really interesting. So I started listening to Aileron Kong in in the Land Founding, which is the first book. And when he would be going through Richter's stats, I'd zone it out. When when Richter would be like trying to get something new and they'd be going through the stats of whatever was new that Richter would wanted to get, I'd zone that part out. That part of the book wasn't the slightest bit interesting to me. Now, by the time I'm at book number eight, and I have a much better understanding of how his choices for how he spends his mana, for for how he spends his different points that he gets, how those choices affect him later. I find myself rewinding, well, wait a minute, oh, he, I missed the, the stats there. Go back, and I'm actually rewinding to re-listen to his stats to see where his stats are at. When he's picking stuff, I, I'm, I'm listening, and I'm making my own choices, like the first time yeah. he, he reached in and he picked something from the darkness... Mm-hmm. What, what was that? Not dark, but chaos. Yeah, the chaos. He, he picked something. Why would you pick what he picked? I agree with that. Why would you pick something that has like, what was it? A, it, it was a bigger chance of turning on him than originally it had like a huge chance of turning on him. And then mm-hmm. because of his stats, it's only like a 10% chance of turning on him. But still, you're you're in a life and death situation and and it's... It's your last chance, so you're going to pull out a weapon that there's a 10% chance will turn on you and just take you from life and death to death? And from what I remember listening, there was another option that to me made way more way sense more in the sense. situation. Yes. And so when he picked the other, I was like, what are you doing? Yes. But these are series that I actually, I have my roommate listening to the Land series and another one of my friends listening to Kelcade's Dark Tiding series. And... Um, they both started going through them really quickly, and they both absolutely love them. And so I've been telling them all the series we have on this list, these are the next ones I want you to listen to. And one we haven't discussed yet is the Lusam series. Yes, we love the Lusam series. I didn't know about oh. that series yet until we were sitting at my aunt's house, and my dad and Caleb were talking about books. Caleb's and my they, nephew who's into audiobooks like me. I think he's done some I, of the videos. They did. Uh, he's following my lead. Come on, who wouldn't want to? <laughs> They, they did, <laughs> they were talking about books, and they mentioned that one, and I was, they asked me, you know, what I thought about it, I was like, I haven't read that one, and they both flipped out, were like, what, 
that's the next book you have to listen to. Oh my goodness, it's so amazing. And I blew through it in a couple days because it was just so good. I don't... And it's been a while. It's been yeah. a while. I, I don't know where... So Dean Cadman's the author of that one. That one is not lit RPG and it's not based on lit RPG. Kel Cade's book series is not lit RPG and it's not based on lit RPG. Kel Cade's latest book just came out. So it's going to be a while before we get the next book in his Sadly. series. He's not a fast author, which is fine. I'm willing to wait. As good as his books mm. are, I'm mm. more than willing. And he does not do... Um, he's not one of those authors that does a formula. You know, you've got those authors, like Louis L'Amour was a favorite Western author of mine, but he was also a formula author. Every single one of his books followed a formula. You knew that the hero was going to nearly die and crawl through miles of brush to rescue the woman in the end of the book. I mean, that's just 100% of the time that happens. It's, it's his formula. There's no way Kel Kade has a formula for these books because each book is so different from... You don't know from book to book to book what is coming. I mean... Book one to book two. From the very beginning of book two, you were going, "Yeah, where did this Redskin come from? This is it's, such a different Redskin. Yeah, because he goes from not understanding anything and seeming so out of place and taking over, you know, a couple underworlds to being this high noble and, and still... Kind of foppish. Yeah. Lordy, and then, toity, yeah. <laughs> the next book, they're, they're at the tournament. And he's doing his whole thing there. That's the third book, right? Yeah. And then, and then, and then the he has fourth. to rescue everyone from the... All right, so <laughs> video just died on us. I, I record these on my phone. I've asked for a better camera for Christmas. But for now, they're being recorded on my phone. I didn't realize I didn't have any space left. So all of a sudden, bam, it died in the middle. I'll be cutting these two together. But that is what happened there. I don't even remember what we were talking about before that caught us. We were talking about King's Dark Tidings going from the third book where they end up on uh, that, that worthless island. island and then going into the fourth where he becomes an emperor. Yeah. In yeah. in just a few chapters too. Yeah. And then uh, Assyria Ray becomes uh, an echelon of two echelons. The third and the fourth I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah, she comes she, some high up person, and she, she's married. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. I was that was a, that was a happen. marriage that I saw coming. Oh yeah, I didn't see the way it happened coming. Yeah, but you just knew they were going to end. It up was going to happen somehow. Yeah. It was just the way it happened, and I love how it's painful for him. <laughs> and then she's just mad at him, like, "Why did you say it?" Yep, you'll have to listen to it to get that, but. That series is absolutely... All of these series on here are great, and they're all ever so slightly different. Um, one thing I like about Sufficiently Advanced Magic, it's just that he's nothing amazing yet. I mean, he's good mm -hmm. at what he does, but he's not immediately overpowered. Or overpowering. Yeah, and he's he has to work really hard to be good for his team and to help them through their problems. Whereas yeah. other people... They carry their team, or they don't... Richter doesn't really need much of a team towards yeah, them. Yeah, Richter's getting so powerful that, <clears throat> that that he's a force of nature in and of itself. Kelcade, you know, Reskin has carried everyone through this series. Now it's starting to become a point in time in that series to where he is going to need people, and he's going to need to learn to trust people, and that's starting to get stronger. Well, in the ending... I hated that I hated ending. It. It's oh, so I hate good, that but ending. so bad. I mean, oh, and who did it? Were you prepared for it? Not for. I was prepared for what happened with Tyrion and that. No, I mean I when it when it all of a sudden went epilogue. Had you been paying attention to time so you knew I had, you were close to the end of the book? I had been checking because so with my job, um, I'm an exterminator. I'm driving around all the time. And I have a route that covers a really large area, and a lot of it is back road. So I don't have service to download another book. So I was looking, and I was like, okay, I have four hours left. Download this book. This is the next series I want to start so that I can just go right into that. Otherwise, my day gets really boring because I'm out nowhere, nowhere to talk to, nobody to talk to. So I knew it was coming up, and the closer I got, that made it so much worse because I was like, you can't end here. You have to have more after that. 
And then not only does it end right after that whole thing with Tyrion, but it, it ends with... It ends with Reskin for the first time ever being, in the series taking a hit and, and taking a serious hit. And yeah. Is he going to live? Is he going to die? Yeah. They, they actually say that... And see, I wasn't paying attention. Really? I had no mm-hmm. clue. And so I'm just listening and I'm thinking, oh, there's, there's, you know, another hour, two hours left. And all of a sudden, epilogue. And I'm like, what? I'm at work and I'm like screaming at the top of my lungs. What? No, you can't do that. You blankety, blankety, blank. How dare you do that? You know, it just, ah, <laughs> oh. yeah. But at the same time, that's how you know it's a good book. is because you don't want it to end like that. And he knows just where to leave it off that you have to come back for the next one. Although I got to say, my favorite, <clears throat> favorite ending was Aileron Kong. I, I don't remember which book it was, but he ends with the most perfect cliffhanger. It's I've the eighth book. Ever. No, I'm listening to the eighth book. I haven't finished that one yet, so it's not the eighth book. The, the then, earth opens up, he falls down, he's hanging from a cliff, mm. and the book ends. And I'm like, that's the ultimate cliffhanger. He's I literally hanging by his that. fingernails from a cliff. I mean, that's a, that's a true ultimate cliffhanger. I never realized that was a cliffhanger like that until he pointed out. And then I thought back on it and I was like, wow, I can't believe I missed well, that. Well, and, and one of the things that mm-hmm. Aelon Kong is really good at doing it is, is taking... Oh, how do I want to phrase this? He's taking things like cliffhangers... And almost turning them into a pun. He, yeah. he, he likes to take things that, that you know what they are, and, and they're an element of different books, and, and in his book series, he almost turns it into a joke or a pun. And that was what he did there. Well, let's give him a cliffhanger. Hey, let's give him a cliffhanger to where he's literally hanging from a cliff, and that's where we're just going to end the book. Yeah. I, it was It's my favorite ending because... Most authors are like, oh, I'm going to do this cliffhanger. And I'm like, that's not really a cliffhanger, people. <clears throat> I mean, a cliffhanger is where you don't know. The, the Kel Cade series ended on a cliffhanger. You don't know if Redskin's going to live or die. That's a cliffhanger. But oftentimes, they'll leave on what they call a cliffhanger. And I'm like, that's not a cliffhanger. It's an important moment in the book. It, it's possibly a turning point in the book. But it's not really a cliffhanger if you know what a cliffhanger is. And then with that cliffhanger, I just... I loved it. Yeah. I don't know how much space I have left on this. So did you have anything else you want to say about any of the series? Um, one that I'm still listening to. It's from Dakota Kraut. I just finished the first book, and I believe it's the Divine Dungeon series. It's another series he's already finished. And I know you had started it before, and I know that because I, I downloaded it, and then you start the book, and it says, would you like to start from where you left off? And it was 16 minutes into I the book. It. Part so, I knew it was like, oh, I don't like this. It's one that I saw that, but I still... I paid for it, so I still wanted to, you know, see if I'd enjoy it. I listened to the entire thing. By the end, I want to get the rest of the series. I want to listen to it. I don't know if it's going to become one that I like nearly as much as The Ritualist and Regicide, but I enjoy it because you're getting to see the side of the dungeon and how it makes everything. And this time, it's actually like a a person's soul making the dungeon. And then you have the owner of the mountain who found the dungeon... He's going in and becoming an adventurer, and you get to kind of see um, both sides and how they interact. So I want to get the next book um, and listen to that. And then also, I don't remember the name of the author, but Bushido Online. That's I when I started. That I started that on my way driving up here. It's another one kind of like um, The Ritualist where he's injured or in a bad spot. And he kind of can't do what he needs to do. And he gets a really good offer and he takes it. Um, and I'm enjoying it. It's He has all the leveling up and all that stuff. But it's interesting because it's a, a martial artist who somebody did an illegal move in a tournament. And he's blind. And they can allow him to see and continue to work on his skills through the game. So I'm interested to see where that keeps going. I'm about to be driving home. So I got another four or five hours to listen to more of the book, and I'm going to be listening to it on my way home. Yeah, see, with, with the Divine Dungeon, I started listening to that one, but that was back before I understood Lit RPG. And there is a learning curve Definitely. to Lit RPG. Now, if you start with a good series, with, with Aileron Kong's series, 
that was a good series for me to start into lit RPG, into true lit RPG, where you have leveling mm -hmm. up and stuff like that. Drew Hayes was my first introduction to lit RPG, and I don't know if his book is true lit RPG or if his book is just based off of lit RPG, because they don't level up. It, it's it's focused on the NPCs, on on the non-player characters, mm -hmm. and what effect being in the game has on them. But the I, I think if I if my first introduction to lit RPG hadn't have been as good as Aileron Kong series is, it would have been easy for me to lose interest. Because like I said in the beginning, I kind of zoned a lot of the, the leveling up stuff. Now that I'm like into it, I might enjoy the Divine Dungeons because I have a better might. understanding of that world. Well, and it's interesting thing. because it's not like Aileron Kong's, Aileron Kong's where it goes through all the leveling. You don't see that. It's As far as I can tell, it's not a game. It's their world... But you can see them getting stronger because they have a rank, like D rank, F rank, E rank. The higher you get closer to A, the more powerful you are. A is like the top. And the dungeon has the rank too. So he can see as he gets more powerful and more dangerous to them that, you know, what rank he's at. And he actually has to, he can be more powerful than he looks because he's a human soul and so he's smarter than other dungeons and he actually has to dial it back so that he doesn't kill too many of them so they'll keep going to the dungeon and they won't just go in to kill him and so it's interesting to see the thought process rather than in other books where they're just going into the dungeon you know destroying it and trying to beat it this one you actually get to see it create the rooms and create the mobs and them go in and kill them and get trapped in it and that's All one of the things I love stuff. about lit RPG is it brings brings so many new elements in, into fantasy is is that didn't exist prior to it. I mean, prior to lit RPG, who would have enjoyed a book about a sentient dungeon? True. I mean, basically, which is what that book is. Which is why I got sixteen minutes into it and was like, oh, I don't want to listen to a book about it. I didn't even give the book a chance. Basically, I don't want to listen to that. Mm. I got rid of it. I returned it to Audible, and then Justin was like, oh, I want this book by Dakota. What is it, Dakota Kraut. Kraut? And so he got it and started listening to it. Hey, Dad, I think maybe you started. Oh, yeah, I remember that kind mm -hmm. of a thing. So, and with sixteen minutes, he wouldn't have gotten to the point of where it started to get good. It it did have a slow beginning. But it definitely got much better as it went, so that's Well, and I would be right very now. interested because the Dakota Kraut's The Completionist series is so incredibly good. Yeah. And his Divine Dungeon series is a very well-known and very popular series. It is. So yes. I'd be curious to see what I would think of it. I'm going to have to make sure that... that I check out and listen to that. Yeah. Before we run out of out of space and time, though, so the, the top six series that we are most excited about, and this is not in any particular order, because quite honestly, it's impossible for us to put this in any particular order. One, we'd have to agree, <laughs> but there's so many of these. I mean, I couldn't tell you which series I like better. Like Justin says, they're all different. They're all special in their own way. They they all appeal in their own way. These are just the top six book series that we agree on. There are some series that aren't on this list that if it was my own list would be there. And it might be the same for Justin. But these are the six that, that we agree on. We can't wait for the next book in the series. And the authors as well. So you're looking for a good book series? Kel Cade. King's Dark Tiding series. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Dakota Crow. The Completionist series. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Aileron Kong. The Land series. And that's not the name of his series. That's all I of the books are like the, the Land Founding. Oh, I've looked it up before. I just, in my mind, it's the Land series. Yeah. Although that's not the name that's of the, the series. That's the name of the first book, so it'll get Well, you the there. first book is The Land Founding. <laughs> And then you've got the land this, the land that. Every book starts with the land and then has one word after it, you know. Um, so, A. Long Kong, the land series. Andrew Rowe, the Arcane Ascension series. Yes. Drew Hayes, Sword Spells and Sorcery series. And Dean Cadman, Lusam series. If you're looking for a good series to get into, 
check out any of these. And I'll tell you right now, if my nephew Caleb was sitting here with us, he would be in agreement on this Absolutely. list, and we know that from conversations that, that we've had. My sister laughs because we'll have two-hour conversations about these authors yeah. and these books, huh? Yeah. Mom and Gre- mom and my in-laws are visiting, and my, my wife and, and my mother and father-in-law, they, my father-in-law's kind of sat there looking at me and Justin as we're getting all excited <laughs> talking about a book. Like, really? You guys are grown adults talking about, yeah, they're just that good. And for the authors, don't change your narrators. Don't change your narrators. They're... Amazing, and it would totally change the characters. Don't do that. Don't. There, there's some really good books out there that I really like, and one of the things that I absolutely hate is you'll have multiple authors on them, and it just kills it when you do that. Definitely stick with. There are there. some that do it well, but most that try to do that, I don't like. There's See, one or two that are good. I disagree with that. There's I've never listened to an author that. Has changed narrators that I was happy with the change in the The narrator. Red Bull series. That was one that I used to listen to when I was really little before Audible was even a thing that I know of. I'd get it from the library and they had like, I don't know, a billion different people doing voice acting because they had so many different characters. That was one. I'm actually still, I'm buying all the books and I got to read a couple more of them still. Still love the series and I enjoyed their voice actors for it. So that was one that's different. Having one voice actor for as many characters as was in that series, it would have just been so hard to do. And I've only ever listened to one of the Red Wall series. Yeah. There you go. Alright, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you like my channel, subscribe, turn on notifications. Questions, comments, feedback, put them in the comments section. That is what it is there for. But, no matter what else, you do today. Make sure that today you listen to at least one really good audiobook and we just gave you a list of six authors. Pick one of their books and you cannot go wrong. Thank you.